Hi, I'm Jeff. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to model mortise and tenon joints using FreeCAD, which is a free 3D design system for your computer. During this video, I'm going to talk about FreeCAD's constraint system, which you will use as part of the modeling process. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to model a mortise and tenon joint. I'm going to do this by modelling a table leg. There is a mortise on two sides of the table leg which allows a stretcher to be inserted. Each stretcher has an integral tenon which goes into the mortise. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a new model. I'm going to switch to the part design workbench, create a body which contains the complete model, and a sketch which allows me to design the stretcher. I like to work in the XZ plane, which is front view, so I'm going to switch to that now. And now we're in the sketcher. This grid is a 5mm grid, and this point here is the origin point, uh, which I'm going to lock one end of the stretcher to. Since the stretcher is simply a rectangle, we are going to use the rectangle tool to model it. Lock it onto the center point, or sorry, the origin point, and then I'm going to set it to some random dimensions for now. You'll notice that the solver on the left says that there are two degrees of freedom. What that means is that in the case of the rectangle, we can change the height and that's length. And it can be done by clicking on the points and then moving them. For example, if we click on the top left, we can change the height. If we click on the bottom right, we can change the length. If we click on the top right, we can change both. But if we click on the bottom left, which is locked to the origin, we can't change either. So how do we set the height and the length of the stretcher? We do that by applying the appropriate constraint. Click the line representing the stretcher, and then we click on the fixed vertical distance constraint, and we're going to set the, con the height to 45 millimeters. Now, you'll notice that the solver now says that the sketch is still under constraint, but there is only one degree of freedom. What this means is that we can only change the length. Doesn't matter whether we click on the bottom right corner or the top left corner, we can only change the length. And that's because this height has been locked in or constrained in FreeCAD terms to 45 millimeters. And we'll do the same now for the length and we'll constrain that to be 150 millimeters using the horizontal distance. Once I've done that, you can see that the box has gone green and that is a visual representation to show that the sketch is fully constrained and I can't change it other than changing the dimensions in the constraints. The solver is also telling us this. So now we can close it and go back to the model and then make it into a three-dimensional object. So I'm going to switch to the axonometric view so I can see it. And then we're going to select the pad option, which allows us to specify how thick we want it. And we're going to make it 20 millimeters. And then we're just going to zoom full size so we can see it. The stretcher does not currently have a tenon, as you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one on the end. And we'll use this end for visible end. So what we do is we click on it. And then we create a new sketch. Which will take us back into the sketcher. Now, in order to make the tenon, 
I need to do a few things, but firstly let me explain the details of the tenant. This tenon will have a 5mm shoulder the whole way around. So what that means is we're essentially going to end up with a box in the middle like this. And then the area outside that becomes a shoulder. To ensure that we maintain a consistent shoulder, what we're going to do is actually constrain the rectangle we've just drawn to the external geometry of the stretcher itself. So in order to do that, what we need to do is use the Create an Edge Lint to External Geometry tool to allow us to bring the edges of the stretcher into this sketch. So what we're going to do is we'll take the two sides only. Now to set the shoulder on the, the top, we're going to set a, a vertical constraint between this point and this point of 5 millimeters. So we select the points, create the constraint and set it to 5 millimeters. And since we also want 5 millimeter uh, shoulder here, we're going to do the same thing, but in the horizontal. you notice that each time I set one of these constraints, the degree of freedom is reduced by one. We now need to make sure that we have a 5mm shoulder at the bottom and the right hand side. So following on the example that we've been doing, we select the two bottom right points. In this case, we are going to set a vertical constraint of 5mm. And for the last one on the right hand side, we are going to set a horizontal constraint between the top two right hand corners of 5mm. As you can see, the sketch is now green, showing that we have a fully constrained model. So, what we do now is we go back into the model and we're going to pad that out and we're going to make it 35mm long. So we select the pad tool again and we set the length to be 35 millimeters. Now the last thing we're going to do is change the color of the stretcher so that it appears different when we assemble the whole model. And then we're going to save it as stretcher. Now the next thing we're going to do is create the leg. So we create a new document. Go into tasks, we create a body and then a sketch for the body of the leg. And again, we'll do it in the front view. And we're back into the sketcher. Now in this case, the leg is still going to be essentially a rectangle. So we use the rectangle tool, we'll lock it to the origin point and this time we're going to make it taller than it is wide. Again you can see two degrees of freedom. So with the leg it's going to be 45 millimeters wide and 200 millimeters high. So we'll just apply the constraints. And 200 millimeters high. It's now green, so we have a fully constrained model. Put it back in the axometric view so we can see it. Pad it out to be 45 millimeters, zoom to fit, and we're going to save it in a model called leg. Now the next thing that we're going to do is place the mortises. The mortises are going to go here and here. And we just do exactly what we've just done using a sketch on the face that we want to put the mortise. So we select the face then go create sketch and we're going to have it up here. And what I want is a five millimeter reveal between the edge of the leg and the stretcher itself and a 10 millimeter reveal from the top of the leg to the top of the stretcher. 
Now, as the tenon is rectangle, so will be the mortise. So we just simply place a rectangle onto the model. Again, we need to constrain it to the external geometry. So we will bring one side of the leg into the, into the model. Now, because the tenon has a five millimeter shoulder, and we want a five millimeter reveal on the the long side of the, the stretcher, we need to make sure that the mortise is ten millimeters in from the side of the leg. So we just put a horizontal constraint of 10 millimeters and that places the left hand side of the mortise in the right place and because we want a 10 millimeter reveal at the top and there's a 5 millimeter shoulder at the top of the tenon we need to come down 15 millimeters for the mortise so we just put in a vertical constraint of 15 and now we have the top left corner constrained where we want it. Now what we have to do is just make the size of the mortise the same as the tenon. So it is going to be 10 millimeters wide. Set it down the bottom just for clarity. And the reason that error came up is because I selected two lines when really I only meant to select the bottom one. So we set it to 10 mil and the length of the tenon is 35 millimeters. So now we have a fully constrained sketch representing the mortise. So go we close that and now what we do is we use pocket tool to cut for one of a better term a hole into the leg. And we're going to set that to be 35 millimeters which is the length of the tenon. So that's one done. We now need to repeat that process on this side. Unfortunately, in this case, it's rotated, so I think it's on this side is where we need to draw it. But if not, we can just change the constraints and it'll move it into place. So we draw the, line, the rectangle, we bring one side of the leg into play. And then we just apply our constraints. So 10 mil in from the side. Fifteen mil down from the top. Ten millimeters. and 35 millimeters long and it's in the right place which is even better and then we just drill the hole. The last thing we're going to do is set the color of the leg so that it is easily distinguishable when we assemble it. Now we're going to assemble the model to show how it all goes together. So we create a new model change to the assembly workbench and then import the leg and two stretches. We're going to save it as assembly. So we're now going to rotate the stretches so that the tenon is in the same alignment as the mortise. So we select one stretcher and then we select transform and we rotate it around the green axis. We're just going to move it so we can see it. We're going to repeat the process for the other one. Now we're going to use the assembly constraints to bring all the pieces together. 
the first one we're going to use is the planar constraint and we're going to constrain the top of the tenon to the top of the mortise. So just zoom in, select the top of the mortise and then go to the back view, select the top of the tenon, which will then bring you into the same plane. Get back to the front view. We're now going to constrain the cheek to the side of the mortise using the planar tool again. So select the side of the mortise and then select the cheek that we want to constrain to it. And the last thing we're going to do is constrain the shoulders of the tenon to the face of the leg. So again, we use the same tool. Select the face on the leg. And then select the shoulders. Helps if you zoom in, and that pulls it into position. We're now going to repeat that process for the other stretcher. So we select planar constraint, constrain top of the mortise to the top of the stretcher. We then select planar constraint to constrain the side of the mortise with the cheek of the tenon. And last but not least, we use a planar constraint to constrain the face of the leg to the shoulders of the tenon and voila we're done. One of the nice features of FreeCAD is it allows us to do a little bit of animation to show how things go together. So what we'll do now is just put a little bit of animation to show how this works. So we'll switch over to the exploded assembly workbench. We'll select the ends of the stretches one at a time, and we will animate them. Firstly, we pull it out, and we are going to make the animation speed 180, and we're going to make it move about 100 millimeters. And then we'll do the same on the other one. Now, these numbers you can just play with to get something that suits you. Then from there what we can do once we've done that we can just use the play buttons at the top to animate it. Alternatively go the other way where they go in. And that is how you model mortises and tenons in FreeCAD with a little bit of fun at the end. Well I hope you found that interesting. If you did, consider giving us a like, and if you didn't, a dislike. Either way, please leave us a comment. If you have any other comments or topic suggestions, please leave a comment below as well. I invite you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you stay up to date with my videos. Thank you for watching.